going to demonstrate the microscopy of myocardial infarction. So before that, we will just go through briefly the gross specimen. Of course, you would have seen a patient with a chest pain uh, due to coronary block. What I'm trying to show is left anterior descending artery showing a big thrombus affecting the area in the left ventricle which is now infarcted, darker in appearance, grossly in the early stage because of edema and hemorrhage. And if I take a cross section of the heart, the myocardial infarction case, you will see the cut section somewhat like this. The interventricular septum, the left ventricle, right ventricle. Now there are big, big thrombus attached to the area of the infarction area of the infarction because there is dead tissue so mural thrombosis remember that's a complication so this extensive area of infarction how it would look like in the microscopy okay so we'll go through the microscopy now this is the section of that myocardial myocardial cross section areas of infarction so how does it appear microscopically so now the normal layers we will see that is the outer area of the myocardium. This is the outside of the myocardium. That is the pericardium. Okay. And that's the pericardial layer. Now, this is the myocardium. The myocardium, if you observe, there is a dark area band here. And outside of this band area, which is darker red in color, compared to outside which is paler in area. Now, understanding microscopy, dead tissue, first change to be seen is loss of nucleus. The blue or the purple color is lost in a dead cell. So the dead cells appear more reddish. And also the hemorrhage adds to the reddishness under the microscope. So this area is actually dead myocardial tissue. From outside, the healing starts after three to seven days by forming granulation tissue. Earlier changes, which starts from the endocardium. Now, if you remember, the blood supply, coronary vascular supply, is from outside to inside. The blood vessels are in the pericardial fat. That's the cut section of the coronary artery. The blood goes through branches penetrates and then starts supplying from here. So this is the most distant area from the blood vessel. So any obstruction to the blood vessel, first area to die is here. Okay, the endocardial surface. And then gradually inflammation, uh, dead tissue and granulation tissue starts appearing from the outside. Now I'm trying to show the microscopic features, okay, of three of the features which are seen here, the pericardial fat, and a small area of pericarditis, okay, pericarditis. If I zoom into this area, now observe the blood vessels are all dilated, congested with plenty of RBCs inside these capillaries, dilated capillaries. Remember the inflammation. Fluid leaks out from the capillaries during inflammation and the endothelial damage results in protein leakage and that protein when it leaks out in the pericardium it gets coagulated as blood clot now when there is only more of protein and less of cells it would be known as fibrin clot because it is more of fibrinogen which is coagulating it's a blood clot okay with few of wbc's and rbc's few so it would be a whitish clot, depending on the amount of RBC. Okay, so it would can be whitish to reddish. Now this deposition on the surface of the pericardium is what is termed fibrinous pericarditis. That is the fibrin, inflammatory cells. Plenty of dilated capillaries. That is the origin of the protein coming out from here. Okay, now gradually we go down. That's the congested blood vessel. Now. I will start from the area of the dead tissue. Now, if you see, this area is more red than this area. And if you observe closely, these myocardial fibers have lost their nucleus in the center. 
only you are seeing nucleus of inflammatory cells in between and there is more space in between. So this is the edema, inflammatory cells. This is dead myocardial fibers, dead myocardial fibers. And as we move towards the surface, there is more and more edema, dead tissue, the inflammatory cells. And if you see this, more inflammatory cells where the muscle is disappearing. So this is the actual digestion happening of the dead tissues by the WBCs, producing all these dead tissues. Now, the dead tissues show this nuclear fragmentation. Nuclei are just pycnosis, nuclear pycnosis. So, they are all dead cells with dying cells, uh, debris. Most of them are neutrophils. They have uh, lobed nuclei and they are literally eating away by proteases which are being secreted. There will be even macrophages as well. Okay. Now, if we see areas now, low power view, you can see large areas of necrosis, large areas of necrosis replaced by dead tissue and as the days progress, usually after the usually third day starts is macrophage reaction. So the macrophages come in after the clearing of the dead tissue cells, the macrophages secrete more proteases and they produce growth factors. And these growth factors start producing new capillaries. Now, if you see here, a very irregular capillary lined by very thick plump cells, endothelial cells, very irregular, newly forming. So, these are all just newly forming capillaries. Still, the inflammatory cells are there few, more of macrophages and fibroblasts. So, this FGF fibroblast growth factor, VEGF vascular endothelial growth factors, all of these from the macrophages are producing new capillaries, new fibroblasts and new collagen fibers. Now that is granulation tissue. Okay, So above this area is the granulation tissue. Now if I again come back to this, you are seeing in the low power view, the outer pericardium with the pericarditis outer area of granulation tissue that's a healing tissue from there here is the necrotic tissue with inflammatory tissue because these are all dead muscle fibers with plenty of inflammatory cells the dying muscle fibers this whole area and if we closely observe here there are plenty of inflammatory cells in between plenty of inflammatory cells and edema that is edema is separation of these myocardial fibers Okay, and as I go towards the endocardium, endocardium layer, now you see here just RBCs, plenty of RBCs with few WBCs and fibrin threads. Now, this is a blood clot, a blood clot. So, this blood clot is stuck to the endocardial surface. So, this is the mural thrombus. So, because this tissue is dead tissue, stimulates tissue factor, factor 7, remember the coagulation and the muscle is not active, the cardiac muscle is not active, so stasis. So, two factors, dead tissue, stimulating tissue factor, coagulation and lack of movement, stasis, causes blood to coagulate and get stuck to the dead tissue, that's the mural thrombus. Okay, so in summary, this is a cut section of myocardial infarction. Okay, so remember the myocardial infarction, the area of dark area of dead tissue, hemorrhage, inflammation, gradual healing by granulation tissue. Also observe the mural thrombus and the area of the dead tissue in the cut section. Okay. Now, in this, if I observe here, the pericardial fat, that's the pericardial fat, mural thrombus is inside in the lumen, granulation tissue at the outer area, and then area of myocyte necrosis with plenty of inflammatory cells, and then a small area of pericarditis is seen here. 
Okay, so hope you have understood. Myocardial infarction. This is a full thickness infarction with the pericarditis and mural thrombus. Thank you.